I'm continuing my celebration of Ding Liren's victory in the World Chess Championship by looking back at some of his past games. In the previous video, I looked at a game from the Chinese Championship 2009. Ding was just 16 years old, and this was a breakthrough event. The lineup was incredibly strong, and he actually won it. So I'm going to show you another game from this tournament. Ding has white against Ni Hua. Now Ni Hua at that time rated 27.24. Ding's rating, remember he was only 16, was 24.58. So a massive discrepancy between the two ratings. Let's see what happened. Oh, I should also say that I think this game illustrates an aspect of Ding's play very well. A lot of people going to the World Championship match were saying, oh, Ding's quite technical. Well, he can be, but I think he has a really uh, dangerous attacking streak. Well, we did see that in, in the match against Nepo. But this really exemplifies his play from when he was younger, where he really did go for it in so many games. So it's a Grunfeld. And Ding plays rook b1, and this is one of the sharpest lines. Variations are very forcing. By just nudging the rook to the side, it takes it away from the long diagonal and makes this move d5 possible. Castles, bishop b2. It's very theoretical. you really got to know your stuff when you go in for this. Knight c6. So... There's an attack here, and instead of defending, the pawn advances to d5, attacking the knight. It's possible to take this. In fact, I'm going to show you another of Ding's games right after this one with that. But knight e5 is the main move. So both players would have known that this is a, a very well-trodden path. Um, in fact, looking at my database, around about 1,200 serious games have been played from exactly this position. And here queen d2 is the main move, which protects the pawn, but also perhaps looks to play f4. But okay, that's another story. Ding played rook b3. He'd obviously been preparing this move. Really interesting move. Obviously protects this one, but sometimes one can play c4 and that rook swings across the third rank. Let's have a look. Queen d6. So that guards f4 prevents castles because then h2 would be on prees. So white has to decide what to do here. And in the meantime, black perhaps wants to break with e6, even f5. So for example, if white goes for it with h4, then f5 is a very dangerous counterattack. So after queen d6, queen d2 from ding. That means he's ready to play f4. So e6, black needs counterplay very quickly. f4 pushes the bishop back. And now c4. So that rook might be able to swing over to the king side. Be careful, there's a bishop there as well. Here, Niwa plays e5, which is, I think, quite a contentious move because it does allow white to, to push on with f5. The problem is if e takes d5, then e5, and then you take here. Obviously, that's a huge center. That's very troubling for black. But somehow in the Grunfeld, you seem to be able to get away with that sometimes, but it does look better for white. But bishop d4 is interesting. That's of course, prevents castling. That's not so easy to deal with. But e5 played and f5. Now, if white is given the chance to castle, securing that pawn on f5, then this is a dream attack for white because this pawn, well, this, these, these pawns, <laughs> this whole pawn center creates such a strong 
wedge that's carved out space and white can have such good fun attacking from that position. So it, I think it's absolutely necessary that black takes that pawn. And it does also bring the bishop into play. Now, it's possible to take here, but that would really lose the initiative. It doesn't really connect with anything else that white is doing. Castles, attacks the bishop, which dropped back to g6. Again, rook takes b7 is possible, but I think that gives black time to find his feet. You know, maybe rook here is coming over to exchange that rook. Don't like it. But ding, well, he loves the initiative, h4. And this is such a bold way of playing. You know, he's playing one of the strongest players in the country and he has no fear at all. So he wants to just keep pushing like this, for example. I mean, black would love to push this here, but that's too risky. That is way too risky with this pawn advancing. In this case, rook b7 looks like a pretty good move as the seventh rank is open and you know, in combination with these moves, queen g5 and h6. So Nihua decided to play h5 that allowed the queen in. And after e4, bishop takes pawn. So ding is now a pawn up, but it is still a very tricky position. Rook e8. Interesting, he brought the bishop back. That's basically to make sure that this pawn isn't really going anywhere. Uh, but also, it frees the path for the rook's pawn. Queen defends the b-pawn and... Niwa keen to exchange queens. If I can just get the arrow right, that's better. h5, pushing the bishop back, and then rook g3. So that rook does finally swing across to the king side, threatening queen takes bishop mate, therefore an exchange of queens. Bishop d4 check, king h2. Well, this is looking pretty good for white. Although Ding actually isn't a pawn up. Yes, I said he won the pawn on h5. Well, he did, but actually material is still level um, here, if I can count correctly. Um, but that passed pawn has real potential here. And the king is a little bit insecure. So it's a really not an easy position for black, but... Very double-edged. Bishop e5 played. Bishop f6 check. It's an interesting move. Not absolutely necessary. One could play bishop f4, but bishop f6 is absolutely right. So, because of the check here, the rook has to be taken. And then e3. What a monster bishop that is on f6. Potentially supporting the d-pawn, but just boxing in the king as well. And now rook f4. Yeah, d6 actually immediately not a very good move. Rook e6, and then rook d6. But rook f4 is extremely dangerous. Obviously, threatening rook g4 check. Therefore, bishop c2. Yeah, if rook e4, normally in such situations, when you're the exchange up, you always want to exchange rooks. In this particular case, d6, d7, d8. This one isn't too good. Therefore, bishop c2 was played in order to give the king a flight square. King f3. So this switches strategy. King h7, g4. And this introduces new attacking possibilities. But at the moment, Ding is just keeping everything very tight, very secure, so that e4 square can't be used by black. It's, it's almost impossible to find counterplay here for black. King g8, g5, the pawns march on, a6, h6. Okay, it looks a little bit strange because... These pawns 
seem to be well blockaded on the light squares. But uh, Niwa was in for a big surprise here. Um, I mean, the best is to bring the bishop back. It's still very unpleasant, but anyway, that's that's another story. But bishop g6 played. Now, what should white do next? Over to you. I will have my customary slurp tea. You have a think, and I'll give you the solution in a second. White to play. What do you do here? Cheers. Ding came up with a winning move. H7 check. It's really beautiful. And no doubt spotted a long way off. So king takes, well, that's the easy one. That's mate on h8. Okay, bishop takes. What's the big idea? Simply rook h4. And here, knee resigned. Why? Why did he resign? What's the big deal? Well, here is the problem for black. b5. Bishop d3. It's that simple. Threatening bishop takes bishop checkmate. Look, there's a bit of a traffic jam here. The king just doesn't escape. And there is absolutely no defense. So if bishop takes bishop, it's still mate on h8. What a fabulous finish. Very subtle. Just shoving the pawns up the board. And then this was the killer move. And rook h4. Now, I want to come back to this position early on in the game. So here is where knee played knight e5. And I mentioned the possibility of bishop takes pawn check. Now, this isn't seen very often. But I want to show you another game of dings. Now, this was played in the next year. This is played in 2009. This was played in a tournament in China in 2010. So this is d Excuse me, Ding against Li, China 2010. Now, watch what happens. I'm just going to flick through this one very quickly. Um, I mean, it's, it's well known that White has a very dangerous initiative here. This looks like such good fun to play. Just shove the H-pawn down the board. It's not subtle, but it is highly effective. And what is that knight doing on the edge of the board? Knight g5, exchange of bishops, h6, white's got a good move here, h5, that busts open the h-file, peace sacrifice, white is coming in, this is a threat, f6, queen d3, so the queen simply wants to swing over, queen d7, stops queen h3, queen f3, it still wants to crawl in, via h5 possibly and there's also this possibility of rook h8 queen a4 played okay looking for counterplay here be careful and now winning idea rook h8 check so i think we know what happens if that's taken that'll be mate on h7 we've seen it a thousand times okay so rook h8 king g7 not over yet check of course if the king steps up then well you can choose your your checkmate king back queen f5 this was very well calculated by ding now the best that black has is just to chase the king but that king is finding security queen e5 now that stops the threat of queen e6 mate But rook number two comes over, so now there's a, a new threat of check and mate on h7. Queen f4, takes, takes. Now, what's the winning move for white? Can you spot it? Checking immediately doesn't work, but simply king f5. And that is the final position. Now, that is pretty good. Um, let me show you what's happening. So, for example, if knight here... We'll give a check. And that is checkmate. So that was the final position. <clears throat> now, isn't that beautiful? And as I said, Ding has a real attacking streak in his style. 
exemplified by these last two games. I'll be presenting more of uh, Ding's past games in, in videos over the next uh, two or three weeks. I, I do hope you enjoy them. Thanks for watching.